For the first time in five years, the Detroit Lions have won three games in a row, and I'm going to give you four reasons. Not one, not two, not three. Four reasons why exactly the Detroit Lions were able to beat the New York Giants. And man, it's sweet, isn't it? I understand we're worried like, oh no, what about our draft pick? Don't worry. The Rams are three and seven. Like they're taking care of the good draft position for us, which is just absolutely insane to see. And I want to give you four reasons right now why the Lions beat the Giants. And it started in the trenches. Number one is that the Lions absolutely dominated the line of scrimmage. And I want to go ahead and show you guys. We can look into the box score here. First off, isn't that just beautiful up there? Seeing the 31-18 victory. But we dominated the line of scrimmage. We had 37 carries for 160 yards, while the New York Giants had 26 carries for 89 yards. Now, if you take away Jones's seven carries for 50 yards, Yards, you are at 19 carries for 39 yards. At least that's what my quick math is. 19 carries for 39 yards. That's not to mention Saquon Barkley, arguably the best running back in the league right now, getting 15 carries for 22 yards. The New York Giants win football games for a very simple reason. They win football games because they run the ball they control the clock, they play good defense, they keep their opponent off the field because they run the ball well. I think last week, um, I, I think Barkley had like 35 carries, which is nuts. That's way too many in the NFL. It's too many at any level. But he he ran the ball like 35 times, and that's what they do. They run the football, and that way it takes the pressure off Daniel Jones, play action, and then on defense, they get after you with the blitz. We dominated the line of scrimmage on the defensive end. We dominated the line of scrimmage on the offensive end. We already talked about how many running yards we had. I believe it was 160. How about this stat? Jared Goff dropped back to pass 26 times. How mobile is Jared Goff? He's not. How many times was he sacked? Zero. This is a big deal, everybody. So, like, I just want to kind of emphasize again, um, the Lions – played well and absolutely dominated the line of scrimmage reason number two. And honestly, it might be a really big reason. Uh, probably reason number one is turnovers. The Detroit lions had two interceptions. Now one of them, it was on fourth down. So just a stop is a stop, but we ended Kirby Joseph ended up returning it far enough that it ended up being a good thing. And one fumble recovery. Aiden Hutchinson, we'll talk about him in a minute, but he was able to get an interception, a great interception for a defensive end, just proving more and more that this guy knows what he's doing. He has what it takes to be an all-around, really solid, good to great defensive lineman. He has it. So he was in the right place for the fumble recovery. He got himself into the right place when he dropped back into coverage for an interception. Like I said, we'll talk more about Hutch later, but the turnovers were a huge factor. And then Goff didn't turn the ball over. He should have one time. He absolutely threw a ball that should have been picked. I understand they were playing man to man and it just, no, the guy should not have been there, but it was interesting to me because that interception, I don't know if you know the one I'm talking about, the almost interception, he had Kennedy crossing across and then he was going for Raymond the other way and Kennedy beat his man by so much that after he cleared, he was still throwing to, to Raymond, but his defender was in the, in the path of the ball. This tells me that Goff actually was looking deep read first. And then he was coming back to the short read. So when the deep read was open, that's where he was throwing the ball. That is a level of confidence that we don't always see from Jared Goff. Really, really nice to see that confidence in Goff. All right. The third reason that I think the Detroit Lions were able to win this game is simple. And it got kind of even toward the end but it is penalties. And if you look at penalties right here, we had five penalties for 45 yards and the New York giants had eight penalties for 63 yards, but it wasn't just eight penalties for 63 yards. It's when it happened. So when you win the line of scrimmage, when you win the turnover battle, when you win in penalties, that is how you get 
a blowout. That is how you win a game with a blowout. Whether we had more total yards or not, which I don't believe we did, right? It doesn't matter because we win in all those categories. And part of the reason we had less total yards, it was about even at halftime, even though we were up uh, 17 to six, I believe. I think we were down like seven total yards at half. And then the Giants ended up with considerably more total yards because they were chucking the ball over the yard, all over the yard in the second half because they were trying to catch up. We were with, we utilized our short field and we scored points off of it. We took the turnovers and we scored. That's huge. It's not that we just had three turnovers. We scored points off the turnovers. It's not just that we, um, limited ourselves to five penalties, but we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot. And even when we did, we still found ways to get first downs. Um, we were better on third down this game. I mean, there are so many things. So we dominate the line of scrimmage. Number one, number two, we win the turnover battle. We actually dominate the turnover battle. Number three, we win the penalty battle. This is, I believe the third game in a row that the other team just made more mistakes than us. In the first two games, we were able to squeak by with a victory. In this one, yeah, the offense showed up. And this is the first complete game. I will still make the argument that we played all year. It was the first time that both our offense and our defense was really, really solid. And you see that in the score. They got a late score with four and a half minutes to go. But we're up 31 to 12. Like, this is what it looks like. You played absolute complimentary football. And I, you're right. You can make the argument that against the Bears, the defense played well enough to say it was complimentary football. Completely agree. But this game, the offense played really well. The offense played well. The defense played well. And you got a victory. So what about the last reason? Because I said there was four. And the last one is our standout performers. If I were to ask you who are the standout performers for the Giants, you'd say Slayton. And that's it. I don't think you could talk about anybody else. Nobody had a sack. Nobody created a turnover on defense. Um, on offense, you could say Jones because he was thrown for a bunch of yards. But he also had two picks. So, no, none of those players would be standouts. The Lions, on the other hand, we already talked about Hutchinson. Interception. Um, fumble recovery. And not to mention just some of the things he did in the run game that didn't necessarily result in tackles, but like Saquon Barkley had a couple runs to the outside where Hutchinson got penetration on the edge and he had to go even further around the edge, which means one yard loss, two yard loss instead of a big gain because he was holding the edge so well, he can do so much. The next guy, because of the turnovers, he was overlooked, but he was the reason we were ahead in the first half. And that is Aleem McNeil. You have the sack. You have a couple tackles for losses. This was Aleem McNeil's coming out party. He's had a solid rookie year. He had a he's had a solid second year. And today he was just like, oh, no, no, no. Twinkle Toes is the man. And he was showing out a little bit. So it was really fun to be able to watch Aleem McNeil uh, do that. For the second game, now third game starting, but then the second game here, Kirby Joseph again proves that he is a ball hawk. The dude knows how to get the football. This comes with a share of mistakes as well, but he is a ball hawk and getting those turnovers is something Detroit hasn't had in five or six years, uh, four or five years, right? Someone who can get turnovers is huge. You saw it in this game. That's what turnovers do. All right. Now we've got to go to my man, Williams. Let's talk running back. He was good. Jamal Williams, three touchdowns, 16 carries, like 65 yards, somewhere in that range. Um, he's just a workhorse. He's a good lead back. He's a good goal line back. He knows he can find first downs. He can find touchdowns. Um, and he was fantastic with three touchdowns and kind of proved that maybe he's the lead back, even as Swift continues to get healthy. As weird as that sounds, he's just consistent. If you want to run the football, he is a good runner of the football North and South doesn't mess around what he lacks in uh, explosion and burst. He makes up for with IQ and strength. And now we've got our last, what I thought was kind of a standout performer. And uh, I'm going to go back and we're going to, we're going to look at, at some of the stats here. Um, and one guy that I thought just played really, really well was Justin Jackson. We didn't talk about it much, but in the second half, he was really the one who put his stamp of this game's over behind just a phenomenal offensive line. Like I said, we won in the trenches offensively too. And, uh, Justin Jackson 
did what he did in the preseason. He ran the ball well for a good average. He ran with some power, but man, he was breaking tackles. He was reading the defense well. He was reading um, where to, where the holes were, where to cut. And I thought he really did do a phenomenal job. And that could be, Jackson could be that missing link in this backfield. Because what it had become was DeAndre Swift is in when you're throwing the ball. Like, 70% of the time. If Jamal Williams is in, you're running the football. Um, well, greater than 50% of the time. And it kind of became predictable. But with a guy like Jackson, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it might be running, might be passing. And he's that guy that can be in there that can do both effectively enough. So now all of a sudden he's starting to get a lot more run. And what you see when you have three running backs is, oh, the Detroit Lions ran the ball 30, 35 times. No big deal because we're spreading the wealth and you're not just putting a ton of miles on each back. Each back can run the ball. You saw it five times for Swift, 16 for Williams, nine for Jackson. And all of a sudden you got 30 carries, 29. Yeah, 30 carries. But no one guy, you're going into the Thanksgiving game in just a few days. You're not saying any one guy can't have a lot of carries in the next game because they're all going to be rested enough because it wasn't too heavy. So there you have it. There's your four reasons. It's more fun watching Lions football when we win, isn't it? And it's even more fun when we're winning and the Rams are losing. I think it's a blast because we still have a good draft pick so we don't have to sit here and say, we're playing out of good draft position. We're playing out of good draft position. Matt Stafford went down again. I thought I read. I didn't see it, but possibly another concussion like he might be shut down for the season um cooper cup is out for a minimum of four to five weeks with that ankle injury i don't see the rams rebounding and making a playoff push here um i don't root for injuries especially when it comes to those guys those are really good dudes from all accounts and what you see um i'm glad they got their super bowl last year and uh, we're gonna see what's gonna happen with the rams and i'm sure that's time for another video but just excited to see what the lions are doing and not to have to have this thing of like, Oh, we're still four and six that we're definitely not going to make the playoffs, but we keep getting wins and I'm conflicted. Am I happy? We're winning. Am I sad? We're winning. No, we're happy. We're winning period. Three moral victories in a row. This one was just a straight victory. It was really nice to see this team build. Now I'm just ranting because I'm so excited. I'm sure I'll talk about this in other videos and stuff, but it was, isn't it so nice to see us get that hard fought victory against the Packers defense is just dominant. Then we play against the bears and it's a, it's a shootout pretty much. And we get our first road victory. And, and it's so nice when we beat the bears. Cause it's like, all right, we beat the Packers, but we weren't satisfied. We wanted to win again. Then we beat the bears. And now all of a sudden it's like, no, we beat the Packers. We beat the bears. Uh, this is a good team. Like it, this is what the team, the players must be thinking like, this is a good team. We know how to win. Now we are doing what we should have been doing all along. Let's keep it going. And then they just smoked the giants who didn't even look ready to play. Man, am I excited? Now the giants have to go play in Dallas in a few days with all their injuries and a Packer or a, a, a cowboy team that last I checked was up 40 to three <laughs> against the Vikings. So anyways, um, a lot of things, crazier stuff has happened. Y'all, you never know. And sometimes when a team struggles for so long, it's something like this that needs to happen. I think Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees, the curse of the great Bambino, they're down Oh three and they rally back to win four Oh and win their first ever world series. Detroit lions are one and six rally back, make the playoffs. You never know. You just never know. Hey, it's it, a, a, a boy can dream. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already, and uh, you'll get more of our content. And uh, just so thankful that you're here watching, listening, and part of this community. Have a good one. See ya.